What's up guys, it's Joe the Pro here back at it again with another video. Before this video starts today guys, I need you guys to please drop a like on this video, subscribe, hit the post notification bell. So what we're going to be doing today is a pit overhaul on an 8230 pin setter with the vertical ball lifts. So I know you guys probably think the ball lift has nothing to do with this, but it does because of the pit board in the middle. It is slightly different from the 8270 version, but it's basically the same process. So we are going to start by removing the curtain, and then we'll get to doing the front roller and the ball doors. So I'll try to provide this step by step and make it look as simple as possible, and we'll try to make it as quick as possible. All right, so basic, the basic tools you'll need, you'll need the uh, roller and hinge tool here. Uh, the lock ring players. Um, I made this tool, this is to keep the tension on the spring for the hinges. You'll see what I mean in a second. Um, this is to help get the tension off of the spring for the hinge. And these are just T-wrenches, a few screwdrivers. I got my impact over here. So as I said, um, I'm gonna get my gloves on here. The lighting here is just phenomenal, as you can see. And we're going to start by removing the ball doors here. Um, this video may be a little bit long, but I'm going to try to go as quick as I can here. Just so we don't lose nothing. And now, I guess we can take the curtain out. Let's see if we can do it without lowering the table before we pull the plug here. guys I just want to make a quick note um, first of all when you're removing the curtain you always want to move remove the cushion block that's on this side on the ball return side and that's just so if while you're removing the these little allen head bolts here if one of these nuts right here breaks off these are welded nuts onto the frame you at least got a way to get in there and re-weld them other than doing it on this side where it's impossible to get in there and you're basically screwed. So I just wanted to let you guys know about that and I think that's it. We're gonna get these pins out of here and start removing the front roller. And I also forgot to mention in regards to the cushion block, there's this little metal disc in there and it sits in there against the tube and you wanna really keep up with this metal disc. Um, that way, that uh, that weldment there will eventually eat through this rubber here. And then before you know it, you'll have a hole in the side of the machine there. So it's really important to keep up with this disc. This one actually didn't have one. But luckily, the cur I don't think this curtain's been in there that long. I didn't do it, but it didn't even have one in there. So I think this was the last one I had. But always keep up with this disc. Now this is what I'm talking about right here. So as you can see on this one here, this is the one on the non-ball return side. Um, this disc must have been missing at one point because as you can see it ate right through this um, housing here and it was about to go through the frame of the machine here. So what they decided that they were gonna do is cut out a piece of the rubber here and put the disc in like that. So before the end of the video, we'll go in and replace that rubber because as you can see, it's pretty torn up. Um, with the kind of stuff I've seen around here, it doesn't surprise me, honestly. So, that's why, that's part of why this job takes so long to the time you're making up for years worth of people's BS. So, yeah, just remember to keep an eye on that and you'll be good. Alright, so basically when you pry this front roller back, you want to have a good grip on it. <laughs> Gotta get a glass of water. But, this is... Part of the video I watched, this is the part that wasn't clear. So what you'll need, because what, what you have to do here, after you pry the front roller back, you have to have something to pin the hinge back. And they AMF makes these special pins here. They look like this. 
It's like a bent rod and then it has a little weldment here on the side. So what you gotta do is when you pry this roller back here, let me get my phone light so I can show you guys. Cause I wanna be really clear on this to prevent anybody from being nervous. So, let me go through my notifications here. So as you can see, when I pry this back, see there's a little hole right there in front of the hinge. And what you wanna do is you take this, get a better grip on it real quick. You wanna take this and you gotta try to get it in that hole. I don't think I can do it with one hand here. Um, but you gotta, you just gotta get this little pin in, in that little hole right there in the frame of the machine. And it'll sit in there just like this, kind of on an angle. So here, let me get this one in and I'll show you guys. Okay, so as you can see now, I've got it pinned back. You can, it doesn't look like it from here, but you can tell from how the other side is, it's pinned back. Um, it's normal for it to come up just a little bit, but it still gives you enough room to get it off because you can see how loose this carpet is now. And I just got to do the other side now. Make sure if you or if you have to order these, you order two. And yeah. All right, so I got both these rulers pinned back now, as you can see. So now all you got to do really should come out easy, but what you do. You just gotta lift up on it on each side. And sometimes it's a pain, but once you get it out of there, so now you can see I got it out of the hinges here. Oh boy, look how dirty it is under there. So what I do now, I roll it back like this. I'm just do I normally I would cut this carpet right when I get that roller pin back, but I just want to do this like this for now, just to show you guys in case you don't have a carpet to put in and you're just doing the roller. So since I've got that back now, what you do, get it lined up with the ball door here. And of course it's gonna get caught on something here, but right. it was caught on the carpet there. So you just gotta get it started through there. It's a pain sometimes. Of course it's gotta be a pain for the video. There it goes. Alright, so once you get it free you just slide it through to the other machine. Like that. Once you get it started, it's easy. So now, got it through there. And once you get it through the door, you can pull it back through like this. Try not to do that. I know this roller is good because I just rebuilt it not too long ago. Should have probably wrote the date somewhere, but it's whatever. So now I slide it back this way. And that's how you get the front roller out. And now what I'm going to do after I tighten my Pull boot. these off of there. There's these little, I think they're three eighths. They're little three eighths screws. And you take a socket and you loosen them up in there. Okay guys, so I got that pulley off of the shaft here. So how that works is you got the three bolts that go through here. And there's this piece that goes behind those that they screw into. And this, as you can see, it has a little crack in it, and that tightens on the shaft once you have those bolts tight. So what you do here, when you get all these bolts out of here, you have these few threaded holes right here in the, in the pulley. And once you, t you take two of the bolts here, and you just tighten those on there, and that forces the pulley away from this. 
and then you see this crack right here you pound a you pound of a little flathead in there and it comes right off every time never had one get seized on there like that so as I was saying before now what you do when you have that off you're so you got this rear roller hinge right here. You unhook it from under this bracket here. And once you get it unhooked, push it all the way forward. And that releases the rear roller from the hinge assembly. And sometimes you get lucky and the holes line up, but more often than not, they don't. So then what you gotta do, is push it through the ball door like how we did with the other the other two things so I'm just gonna push that roller up there and the thing is you just got to get it out of this hole right here and that's where the hole in the frame of the machine comes in handy because once you get it up there it's really hard to see in here sorry about that guys if you can get it lined up with that hole it's cool usually you can't with these 30s I've got it in there nice so then you can reach through the hole and pull on it. Okay guys, so well, here's the rear roller. Um, I'm just gonna go to say, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. So what you gotta do once you release that hinge, you gotta try to get the roller to go. Alright guys, sorry about that. I just had to change my camera battery on my GoPro. But as I was saying, um when you pull the roller, when you pull the rear roller out, what you gotta try to do is line it up with that hole and get it started through there until the bearing goes under the next carpet on the lane next door. And then what you gotta do is, what you gotta do is get it over this pit support bracket right here and in between the plow. And once you get it past there, all you gotta do is, you know, get some play in the carpet and slide it through the ball door. Now normally I just cut this carpet right in half so then you don't have to go through all that hassle. But I just wanted to do it for the video to show you guys how to do it in case you have to. So yeah, now we are going to work on getting the the screws for the pit loosened up and get this pit board taken out. And I am gonna go ahead and car cut this carpet out now. So yeah. All right guys, so I got the carpet cut out now. It's on the side there. So here's the pit board. So we gotta get this out and that's how we get to the pit support brackets. So on a normal 8230, there's nuts under these screws here. Because these, these are the screws that we gotta take out on the sides. So there's nuts under these brackets here and usually you have to get a wrench on them, like an open end wrench to stay on them. But I we've started welding these pit support brackets We've started welding the nuts onto the pit support brackets. That way he can just zip them out from the top. Now, I don't know if these ones have been welded yet. And I don't think that they have. Because I'm pretty sure I feel a nut moving on the bottom. So it looks like I'll be taking a wrench to these. Yeah. Alright, I gotta get a wrench on them. It's not that big of a pain, but it's more convenient. Yeah, they're not folded. All right, let's get a wrench. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zip these four nuts out right here. 
Oh, there goes my T-wrench. And then same thing on the other side. There's three on that. All right, guys, so I took the camera off my head to do this part. So basically, the easiest way I find to get these pit boards out, um, you guys are probably gonna laugh when you see this, but it's the easiest way I found to do it. So basically, I get set up here on the pin deck. I lift it up, get, get it onto my legs. careful because there's a steel bracket that goes across the bottom so get it set up on my stomach here then you hold on to something sturdy pull yourself out All right, guys, I hope you didn't laugh too hard, but now, as you can see, everything's out of the pit. And I'm just going to go and clean it real quick because, as you can see, it's pretty dirty under here. And that way, it'll just get all the crap out of the way so then we can work on the hinges and stuff in the pit support brackets. All right, guys, so I got the pit all cleaned out now. So I just wanted to note that now is a really good time to go in and inspect the plows. And as you can see here, there is a few cracks in this one. I'm probably going to end up replacing it, but I don't have time to do it today. So I just threw a few pieces of old distributor belt on them for now. Um, I'll probably get it replaced or welded when I have some spare time. Same with this one. This one's got a bad bracket on the bottom, um, but it's still solid. So that's what matters. So now we're going to get to work on these pit support brackets here. So, I think it's, uh, you can see the nuts on that side, I think it's three quarters. Yeah, the nuts are three quarters. So I'm going to get to taking off these nuts here, and we're going to change out these brackets. I, I'm going to put the brackets with the welded nuts on. Guys, so I got both these pit support brackets off now. Um, I forgot to mention to you guys, this one's a bit of a pain to get to. What I do is I stick the wrench to the side and crank it like that. And then once I feel that the lock nut is loosened up, I can I just reach through these holes and spin it by hand until it falls. So I got the pit support brackets off. Um, before I put the new ones on, I am gonna take both these hinges off. And as you can see, there's this very tensionous spring that's on there. And the way we're gonna go about taking the hinge off is that with that piece of angle iron I showed you earlier. This right here, I made this. And what you do is stick it through the coils of the spring. And then I take a few cable ties and just tie it down to prevent it from coming loose and flying across the center and probably hitting me in the head. So I'm gonna go get some cable ties and we'll get to doing that. So how I do this is I get it in the coils like this. Put it in there. And that, that way, I just do this because it keeps the tension on the spring there and it's a lot easier to get back on there. So I'll put the ties through there. This is just a way of protection. So what you do, I, sh I also showed you this cool tool earlier. So what you do is you put it on the end of this. And as you can see, you can put it on this hinge right here. And once you get it like that, can pry this back a little bit more take out our 
special little pin and slowly take the tension off the spring. And as you can see now, comes right off, just like that. So you can see how that goes through the coils like that. You still want to be careful. I'm going to put this somewhere where it won't hurt me if it comes out. Put it over there. So I'm going to do the same thing with that side and we'll get to taking the hinge assembly off. So I forgot, I, don't ha I only have one of those tools so I can't do them both at the same time. So we'll just take this hinge off and serve as it first. But the first thing I notice is this is not free at all. And what that probably means is that this hasn't been greased in about 25 years. So we'll see. I hope the shaft isn't damaged. So what we're going to do is take this lock ring off here. And it should come right off. All right. So as you can see, I got the hinge off here. You just got to take that little lock ring off. And then there's a washer take this off too so basically what you're looking for is any wear on this pin here and this one actually looks pretty good and I'm pretty surprised because these have not been serviced in a while I do see a little bit of wear on this side but it's not nearly as bad as I I've seen in the past it is it still isn't perfect um, but it's not to the point where it's going to cause any issues. So I'm just going to get to greasing this up. And I'll repeat this process for the one on the other side. So once I get this greased, I'm going to put these hinges back on. And while I have them off, I'm also going to replace these rubber inserts that go in where the roller sits. I, have, I just ordered some and they came in time. So I'm going to replace those. I'll do that on the rear roller too, but we'll get these ones done first. I got all this stuff cleaned up now. I got the shaft nice and clean. Got the hinge here nice and clean. So basically what you want to do now. Oh, by the way, I did replace this rubber piece right here. Um, if this copper bushing right here is worn out, replace it. That's basically it. So you want to just take a bunch of grease and just coat that shaft really good the same thing for the bushing and the hinge that way nice and lubricated just to grease that one a little piece so as you can see it's nice and free now that's how it should be well, basically this whole process you have to just repeat on the other side put this back on here before when you put this on don't forget to put that little disc back on behind there because it's kind of like the same deal with the cushion block you don't want this piece going into the side of the frame of the machine it will start to wear out the frame if you do not have that piece there so put this washer back on and our favorite piece of hardware, your little lock ring. Oh, and don't worry, you're not, you guys aren't the only ones who have a pain with these. You gotta have the right bit for all of them. It's a pain. All right, make sure it locks on there too. Yep. You don't want this thing coming off. And now we're gonna take our nice spring here that did not fall off and hit me in the head. Perfect. Yeah, or else it's never gonna come off. All right, so I'm gonna hook it in here first and then put her in there. And then we'll use that special tool again to 
pull this back to get our pin back in. So just make sure it's in there. It is. Then you can cut the cable ties. Just like that, you have the hinge assembly rebuilt. So I'm gonna repeat this process on the other side and I'll get back to you guys after that. All right guys, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. So if you look at this shaft right here, that is badly worn. It's even worn at the, at the joint where it's welded to the frame. So this is why I say that these need to be greased on a regular basis because this is just, that should not ever look like that. Um, they do sell a bolt-on kit for this, but it's just a pain in the ass and it doesn't take much time to just go in once in a while and grease these. Um, same thing with the hinge here. If you look at the hinge, it's where that brass pushing is it's almost worn right into the hinge piece right here uh, unfortunately I don't have a bolt-on shaft for this and I do not have another bushing for the hinge so what I'm going to do I'm gonna pound this bushing out and just rotate it to the other side I'm gonna try to find a bushing though cuz that's no good I'm gonna have to just have I'm just gonna have to come back in here and grind this one off and put a bolt on it. But like I said before, it doesn't take much to grease these once in a while, so you gotta keep up with this. Um, I mean, it's, just, it's really just laziness. All right, well, since I don't have a bolt on, I'm just gonna have to clean this one up and grease it up really good for the time being. I am gonna, unfortunately, have to come back in here at some point and grind this one off and put a bolt on in but as i said just make sure you guys keep these things greased up the same thing with these pit support brackets i thought i had some with the welded nuts on the bottom of them but unfortunately i do not have those either i i have two of i have a few of them but they're for the wrong side so i guess i'm gonna have to put these ones back on after checking these they look pretty good to me um, what you're looking for here is to make sure that these metal, um, they, they kind of look like huge washers. You just want to make sure those aren't separating from the rubber and you should be good to go. Guys, so we're making progress here. I got both the pit support brackets in and tightened. Uh, what we're looking for is just any cracks or any major wear. What we have to do now is wrap the carpet around this pit board here. Just watch yourself on the sidewalls. we're not leaving anything under here and probably want to get on this side once you get it on there I think you can, you can do it when you get it on there but you just gotta remember to wrap the carpet around the brackets the pit support brackets Make sure your carpet's underneath the brackets and not pinched in between. This one seems to be good. Now this is the part where it's helpful to have the nuts welded because it's a real pain to get those nuts on there. But we'll do it. So 
I just got done tightening up the the pit board to the pit support brackets and I will tell you without the welded nuts being on there it was a royal pain in the ass to get those nuts tightened with the carpet in here I had to like it, it was it's just a pain um but before I forget, we do still have to replace these rubber inserts on the rear roller, uh, the rear roller hinges. So I'm going to do that real quick. I show you how to do it on these ones. It's basically the same thing. Well, I guess it was about time for that to come out of there. So we just got to get it started underneath here. Oh, there's the, there's the one I was going to put in. All right. So let's see where it is. So we got to find the hole. I found the roller. Just got to get it through there. There it goes. And same thing as last time, just try to get it so that bearing is sitting on top of the belt next door. And it helps. It helps if you can turn the roller a little bit. You can see the bearing right here. And let's see if you can guide it up here. I don't think I can. I got I can't be in here. Now you can see me I'm getting it in that hole right there. Now it's just a matter of getting it in this hinge. So I did this off camera, but I got that uh, bushing situation taken care of. And we just gotta make sure, make sure this lever is underneath that stopper. And that's basically it. I ended up taking that whole bracket off. Spending a lot more time on this than I really want to. It's going to be a pretty long video, but it's okay. At least you got to do it like a pro. So now, this went on like this, right? Yeah. after all right guys getting the front roller slid through here Don't pinch your fingers. Where we got on? There we go. There's one. There's two, I think. Always make sure these things seat all the way, guys. I know that one is. Alright, so we're going to take these pins out. Always make sure that your 
bearings are seated in there all the way before taking the pins out. I've seen somebody do it before and you gotta try to, it's, it's just a pain in the ass that you don't wanna deal with. one come on get up <laughs> gotta get this pulley on All right, and then the thing about tightening these up is every time you tighten one, usually you have to tighten more. So, yeah. No, I'm running out of SD card time, so I'm trying to hurry it up here. So I'm, I'm just gonna get this pulley on and I'll get back to you. <laughs> 